Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Ancient Gear deck. Not anything mixed or anything like that, although there are definitely some hybrids that I've considered, you know, testing with after I played this game for this video, because I'm trying to familiarize myself more with the Ancient Gear cards in general, with like how they operate and like what their main like play structure is meant to be around, and basically just drawing some conclusions there. But the build that I'm playing in this video is pure Ancient Gears, using the new support from the structure deck that gets released on April 14th alongside the dinosaur structure deck. So basically playing with Wyvern, playing with Reactor Dragon and all that stuff. And the build I found is what I consider to be like a pretty generic build online. I've looked through a couple of different YouTube channels um, and like different like forums on like Pojo and different like other like sources to find out whether or not like people are playing certain cards in certain ways. And so this was a very generic list that I found on one of those uh, outlets that I'm just trying to test just to familiarize myself. But my opponent, Demol, he's playing with uh, Paleozoics as if it wasn't obvious with him activating Pakaya after setting four and passing turn. And so I just summon my Ancient Gear gadget, use this effect calling traps so that I can just poke with it for 500 so that he can't use anything like a Mirror Force card or something, and just go ahead and start getting some uh, some damage in. And he can't target my, uh, my uh, Ancient Gear gadget the turn that it was summoned because of the Ancient Gear Fortress. And stuff like that. So I've got multiple gear towns in my hand as well as Ancient Gear Reactor Dragon. Now this build plays two copies of uh, Ancient Gear Golem and only one copy of Reactor Dragon, but that may just actually not be correct in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Reactor Dragon seems to just be the card that you want to have access to. But luckily here, the reason I did the play in the order that I did was because I do have access to the Ancient Gear Reborn trap card. So it allows me to let my stuff float back and forth over and over again. So. I bring back my Ancient Gear gadget, and so what that allows is for me to activate Gear Town and potentially tribute summon for a Reactor Dragon with one tribute, but then using Ancient Gear gadget to count as both an Ancient Gear monster and a gadget monster. Um, but so he uses his Olenoids to pop my fortress, and I decide, you know, just not to special summon the Reactor Dragon out of my hand. It just doesn't seem like it's worth. But so I play my Gear Town, and I normal summon my Reactor Dragon with one tribute over the Ancient Gear gadget. And so from here, I just rush straight into battle phase because all of the Ancient Gear monsters that are any good have the effect of your opponent can't activate spells or traps when uh, when you attack. So I attack, and Reactor Dragon has this amazing ability where it can attack twice if you tributed a gadget over it, and then at the end of the damage step, you get to pop a spell or trap if it attacked. So like that's great. And so because I rushed into battle phase and then attacked, he wasn't able to flip his Wabaku or anything like that. And so, because it's in the battle phase on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro's coding, I just have priority to make the first action. That's just how it works. Uh, but then, so I'm just able to pop two cards, and I pop a Wabaku and a Storming Mirror Force. And so, like, that's just amazing for me. It's absolutely great. So, I'm basically just in the position where I figured out already straight out of the gate that, like, Reactor Dragon just pressures this deck so hard because of what Reactor Dragon does and what the Ancient Gears generally do, which is preventing things from being activated when they attack. So overall, I feel like I'm in a decent position with the Reactor Dragon. Um, I've got a few different like things that I could do uh, as far as like play lines. Because of the fact that Reactor Dragon pops any spell or trap on the board, I could use Reactor Dragon to pop my Gear Town on Attack Declaration. Uh, but so what my opponent does is he uses his Canadia to flip my Ancient Gear Reactor Dragon down twice. So he does it once, I just flip the muster face up. And then I just uh, then he uh, he flips it face down again, summoning a uh, another uh, little trap dude. And so I saw in Silver Gadget, expecting to you know be able to attack over at least one of them. I know that he has a live Ronin Toad in Grave, so he's going to be able to make uh, Opa Binia next turn or a Toad at the worst. But so he ends up having Morelia, which puts another monster on the board, which is a problem. That's where it becomes a huge huge problem for me, in that. He puts Morelia, uh, he puts a trap in grave with Morelia, and then be, he's able to bring back another trap. So now he's always going to be guaranteed to have three monsters at the start of his next turn because of the Ronin Toten being able to recur itself off of the fact that I saw him strike the uh, the Swap Frog because I didn't want to have to deal with him going into Totally Awesome and then getting back a, a water monster in that method. But so he just overlays his three into Anomalocaris, pops my face down Reactor Dragon, and from here. I'm in a position where I have no idea what I'm going to be doing anymore with the rest of my uh, play string because I get to float with gadgets for a little while um, from like gold into silver and all that but ultimately it just doesn't really amount to much because the reactor dragon is gone. So at this point my game plan needs to be to get all of his Anomalocaris materials gone and 
basically I have to deal with it in certain way. I have to deal with it in a certain way. I have to be able to deal with the Noble Acaris by getting all the materials off of it and then summoning Reactor Dragon again, which is something that's definitely possible off of like Ancient Gear Reborn or just drawing something to to basically allow me to try and facilitate going into Reactor Dragon again, like Ancient Gear Fortress that I could pop or something like that. Um, ultimately, just the way it goes, but my opponent gets really lucky. Top decks a Swap Frog, which allows him to dump another frog, summon Ronin Totem back, and then make it totally awesome. It's like, what an amazing top deck, right? What an amazing thing to top deck. Fantastic. Amazing. But so, he uses a normal Acaris to pop my gadget, and then uses Totally Awesome to negate my gadget's float effect, because he's just trying to pressure me, trying to put me on a clock. I'm clogging with Gear Towns, basically. Uh, so Gear Town is just not anything, I'm not able to do anything with the Gear Town, unfortunately. But so, he's cleared my board, so I'm able to use Ancient Gear Reborn's effect to potentially bring back my Reactor Dragon, which is a huge, huge thing for me to have. But, fortunately for him, the trap that he's drawn into the turn before happened to be a Dynamiscus. And so, the totally awesome tributing itself and adding back a frog made the Dynamiscus live, which meant he got to banish my Ancient Gear Reborn. So it was an absolutely perfect string of cards for him to draw. He drew Dynamiscus to have the Ancient Gear Reborn, and then he drew a uh, he drew Swap Frog to make Totally Awesome, which allowed him to negate my floating gadget, and then be able to fuel the Dynamiscus. So, like, it was just an absolutely ridiculous thing. And yes, I could have played around the Dynamiscus by, like, Ancient Gear Reborning right when he tributed with, uh, with uh, Toad to negate my gadget, but... I'm not expecting to see Dynamiscus there. I'm not really expecting that card. I'm expecting it to just be a random trap that he drew. But anyway, going into the next game, my hand is a couple of gadgets and a couple of Gear Towns. So like the biggest problem I see with this deck is that it seems to clog with Gear Town, but Gear Town plus Catapult is like the go-to opening that you want to see. So you want to max on Gear Town. Unfortunately, we don't have a card like Chicken Game in the format anymore. So you can't be like terraforming into Chicken Game to get draws and then play Gear Town and do all that sort of nonsense. That's unfortunately just not something that you're able to do anymore. Uh, because of the fact that the TCG has Chicken Game Forbidden, which is, honestly, in my opinion, a very dumb thing. The fact that that card is forbidden is absolutely ridiculous to me. That uh, that whole mindset is just ridiculous. But there are different different uh, like hybrids and stuff that you could possibly play with this deck that would possibly increase the deck's performance. The biggest problem that I've been finding with playtesting this deck is that Catapult is literally three cards, and you're trying to capitalize on opening Catapult plus Gear Town, but... You could also possibly just very easily play Zodiacs in this deck because Barrage pops face up cards. So if you open with Gear Town Barrage, that's essentially just another like sort of catapult interaction because Catapult destroys your Gear Town and summons an Ancient Gear, but Barrage would be able to destroy Catapult and summon a Rat Pierre, which would allow you to go into a few more Rank 4s, a couple of defensive lines, a bunch of stuff in uh, in that method. But so. My, my turn structure is just not really the best in terms of what I have access to off of uh, off of my stuff. Now he makes a Sky Calvary of Centauri to bounce my uh, to bounce my uh, Gear Gigant after I max see him, and I've got access to a Twin Twister, so I feel like I'm in a very good position. I've got access to Ancient Gear Wyvern, which is Stratos, which is good. That means I'm going to search for like Catapult for a good follow up. The biggest problem I have is that your Catapult and your Wyvern directly conflict with each other. That's the biggest thing that I've been having a problem with with this deck is that. Catapult requires you to have no monsters on the board, and Wyvern can search Catapult, which could unbrick your hands, but Catapult doesn't allow you to activate it because the Wyvern is a monster on the board. So that's that's the biggest issue that I've been finding with uh, with the overall deck's design. So basically hybrids of, like like I said, Zodiac, implementing Barrage, or implementing just any other engine that's got a good way to destroy cards. So maybe like Metal Foe Ancient Gears could be a potential option as well. The big problem there being that the Metal Foes directly conflict with Wyvern, or I should say Wyvern directly conflicts with the Metal Foe cards, because Wyvern says you can't set cards for the rest of the turn after you activate its effect, so you literally have to pop all your Metal Foe scales first, set as many spells and traps as you want, and then pop the <laughs> pop the gear down and summon your Wyvern. Um, so like, there's, there's a few different things, there's workarounds, there's different things that could be possible, uh, but ultimately it's just the biggest issue that I think that the deck has is the fact that its two best starter cards, being Catapult and Wyvern, directly conflict with one another, and that's like the biggest issue that I've been finding. But so, from here, I'm able to uh, I'm able to activate my stuff because the Wyvern gets beat over by the Sky Cavalry of Centauria. 
a Twin Twister 2 back row away, just because it seems like it's the proper thing to do. And I activate my Ancient Gear Fortress first, because that card prevents targeting and all that, so it seems like a good thing to just keep on the board. Um, I wasn't planning on popping it with Catapult at all. I wanted it to be on the board to be a static effect, um, just to be chilling there, and to be uh, to be protecting my uh, stuff from any like potential back rows. But he ends up Dynamiscusing it, so that's really good for me um, in that regard. And so I use my Catapult on Gear Town that I activate, and I still have another copy of Gear Town in my hand, so at this point, having multiple Gear Towns actually just benefits me very well, because I'm able to activate a second copy of Gear Town, and I'm able to tribute summon Reactor Dragon over Ancient Gear Gadget that got summoned off of said Gear Town that I popped, and I'm able to just do that for one tribute, and the Ancient Gear Gadget counts as both an Ancient Gear and a Gadget Monster for Reactor Dragon to proc both of its extra effects. So from here, he just uses Canadia to flip my, uh, my Ancient Gear Reactor Dragon face down, so, I mean, it kind of sucks because of the fact that uh, that I uh, I lost my Fortress to Dynamiscus and Fortress would have protected that from happening. But he's not summoning any of his traps out of Grave, which is fine for me because whether or not he did or didn't, I have Max C for if he did start summoning traps out of Grave. But also, he's not going to summon traps out of Grave because I've got Wyvern on the board immediately just threatening to kill it and banish it. So he's going to be losing resources anyway. So he's basically kind of backed himself into a corner here with a lone Sky Calvary of Centauria just being the only thing that matters. And so he's going to use it to attack into my Reactor Dragon, taking a thousand, and then bouncing it into my hand. But that's completely fine. I'm okay with that. Because I can just tribute my Wyvern that's still on the board for one to summon Reactor Dragon anyway. Sure, it's not going to get both of its effects, because it wasn't, it wasn't tributed by a gadget. But, like, it's still easy. It's still fine. This is still something that I can work with. And then when you add on to that, the fact that Catapult has the graveyard effect of being able to pop Gear Town, summoning a token and then being able to use Gear Town to summon something like another Ancient Gear Gadget from my deck, or whatever. Um, I can't remember what I ended up going for here. I believe the Ancient Gear Gadget is just the correct thing to go for, um, just because I would be able to tribute two for Reactor Dragon, tributing the token and the Ancient Gear Gadget, um, or I could just summon, like, Wyvern and get a search for another, like, key card. It kind of sucks that Gear Town isn't, like, Ancient Gear Town, so that it could be searched off Ancient Gear Wyvern, but... Regardless, it just, it, it's fine. It works. But so I get my Fortress um, off of my Wyvern and activate the Fortress to prevent targeting from being a thing on the Ancient Gear Wyvern. And then go from there, tributing the token and the one of the Wyverns. Uh, the, specifically the Wyvern that was summoned the previous turn. Uh, because the Wyvern that has been summoned this turn should get blanket protection from the Fortress as well. So I'm able to attack with the Ancient Gear Reactor Dragon into his Downer Magician. And now my option here is that I can either pop his back row or I can pop my Fortress, and Fortress will summon a card from my graveyard <laughs> to attack with. Uh, but at this point, he's still at 6k, so it's like, uh, he's in a position where like he's not going to die this turn anyway, so I would just rather just pop his back row and make it to where there's absolutely nothing that he can do to uh, to like try and mount any sort of comeback by like having trap cards, because he is locked under the Reactor Dragon, not allowing him to activate that card, and I just get to pop it for free. So, there is that to consider. And so he tries to use Ronin Tone in here, and I just activate Max C. It's... Pretty simple, pretty clean, just allowing me to draw into things. I'm playing Power Bond in this list. The list that I'm playing um, has Power Bond in it, which seems really cool because you're able to Power Bond into things like uh, like Ancient Gear uh, Howitzer. You're able to Power Bond into, like, God forbid, you're able to Power Bond into, uh, <laughs> into uh, Chaos Giant. Like, that thing is just massive. But so from here, I just keep attacking with my Reactor Dragon. It's, it's, I'm, I have no issue, like, forcing him into a situation where he has minimal cards. And he's at 1600 now, and I'm still at 77. Like, his deck is very weak to Reactor Dragon being able to hit multiple times, and which is what I basically discerned very early on. But so I decided to go ahead and use one of the power bonds that I drew, and go into Ancient Gear uh, Howitzer, or Ancient Gear Devil, what its OCG name was, and just burn him for a thousand. That way, no matter what happens next turn, if he outs my board, like, if he outs my Reactor Dragon, I can just use Ancient Gear Howitzer next main phase to inflict a thousand damage to my opponent. Like, and it's unaffected by all other card effects. So it's a 2k, and it needs to be outed by battle. That's the only way you can out this card, is by battle. It's unaffected by every other card effect in the game. So, it's an amazingly strong thing for me to have on board now, because of the fact that, like I said, he has to kill this card through battle. There's no way. There's no other way he's going to be able to deal with it, and if he doesn't deal with it, it just immediately main phase burns him to death. So, that's the main thing that I was trying to do. And, and like, Reactor Dragon still has to be outed. That's the thing, you still have to be able to out the Reactor Dragon, but so, he summons a Ronin Toad, and then he normal summons another one that he drew for turn, makes totally awesome, and then decides to attack over my Ancient Gear Howitzer. 
because it's unaffected by all card effects. So, like, he needs to attack over it, like I've said multiple times. But it does have an effect that allows it to float into a new monster. Um, so, like, it just allows me to do a bunch of cool nonsense. So I just end up, just for the style points, summoning an Ancient Gear Golem out of my deck because you're allowed to ignore the summoning conditions. Although, Wyvern was probably just the more correct card, uh, but he would probably just negate it with Toad. Um, so, like, that would be a bit of an issue. He'd be able to negate it and then set it, and then uh, and then I'd have another turn of not killing him. So summoning the Golem here just seems like it was just a better move by far because it's just a big body that doesn't activate. Uh, so there is that. But anyway... Going into the third and final game, another one of these just really weird hands that just doesn't seem like it's meant to function too well. I mean, I've got a Twin Twister, which is good looking at three back row, because as soon as he activates his Pakaya here, I just go ahead and activate the Twin Twister. I'm not even worried about anything else. Um, I use the Twin Twister to target his other two back row, because at this point, like, if there are other copies of traps then there's nothing that I'm going to be uh, like dealing with as far as him recurring trap cards. So clearing the board just seems like the best thing to do here. And so now I've got gadgets, which means I can normal summon these gadgets um, and go into uh, into like a gear gigant to search another card. But I get max seed. I can't activate catapult uh, because of the fact that I have monsters on board. And there's no other face-up card that I could have popped. Um, now, in theory here, I should have limiter removal. That's the theory. But like... There's no reason to limit a removal as well, um, because of the fact that like I'm just going to take a couple hundred points of damage, and his monsters are under Wabaku. I forgot that Wabaku was active this turn, even though I literally just saw it in the replay. Uh, so there is that, but being able to make Gear Gigant and search for a key card to start my uh, start my things moving, or at least like gain extra cards, I end up deciding to search for Ancient Gear Box, and then using that to add Ancient Gear Gadget to my hand, just because that just gives me more cards to work with, which is something that I'm literally trying to do is have more cards and he has to out my gear gigant or else I'm just gonna get another search next turn um, so like there's there's a few things that I've just got running through my head at this point in time on how I'm gonna be playing this and so I end up drawing wyvern which is actually just really good um, like very good indeed but so using the gear gigant here to get another search uh, but he ends up using D barrier calling it C's which is fine is fine in retrospect uh, I'm sitting here thinking that there's gotta be a way that I can just kill him this turn uh, but ultimately, I'm just, I'm not really seeing it, per se. But so he summons another one of his traps from Grave. He summons the Olenoids from Grave off the D-Barrier. And so at this point, I'm like, alright, so he probably has some form of, um, some form of, a uh, trap like, a like a Stormy Mirror Force or something. So that's why I specifically summon the Ancient Gear Gadget here. Because you can use Ancient Gear Gadget to call a Monster Spell or Trap, and then when a monster attacks, period, this turn, while Ancient Gear Gadget's up, they, uh, your opponent cannot activate cards of that type. So the theory was, if that is something like a Wab if that's something like a Storming Mirror Force, which I have seen this match, then I'm going to be able to just play through the Storming Mirror Force because of the fact that I would just be able to attack his zero defense Olenoids with the uh, with the gadget, and then attack with Gear Gigant over the uh, Ronin Toten, and then it would be completely free from Storming Mirror Force because of Gadget's effect. But unfortunately, it's a Wabaku. Uh, Wabaku just seems to be that card that I just in, like, I just 100% lose to in, like, all the videos that I play against Paleozoic. Wabaku is just that bitch. Wabaku is just that card. Like, I just, I can't not lose to Wabaku, apparently. But, so, he just overlays into an Olenoids, because similarly, or not Olenoids, into an Anomal Karras, because similarly to how my deck just seems to pressure him really heavily with Reactor Dragon on a, on a regular basis, his deck uh, can pressure mine with Anomal Karras on a very easy basis, because Anomal Karras is going to pop my big tribute summoned monster that is just chilling out there in attack mode. Uh, but so from here, I uh, summon my wyvern, uh, use it to get a search, uh, but like getting a search for like whatever isn't really going to matter because of the fact that I can't use catapult. So like fortress is fine to search, but I mean it's not going to matter again because catapult. Uh, now in theory, I can't remember if I just normal summoned that wyvern or not. I believe I did. Uh, yeah, because he dynamiscus my gear town. Uh, so he just <laughs> this is where he kind of makes a quick little mistake and then I make a mistake in kind so it's kind of all right but so he uses a normal Icarus, uh to pop my fortress as soon as I put it on the board all right and so fortress floats fortress gets an ancient gear back so I get by my ancient gear gadget I use its effect calling traps and so from here here is where uh, mistakes are made I attack his normal Icarus because I'm like I can get this off the board right now with limiter removal I should have put my Ancient Gear Gadget in attack mode, and I should have attacked with both of them, and now main phase 2, 
I can't overlay into anything. Like, I just, I can't overlay into anything because of, uh, some restriction, um, that, uh, Fortress, uh, prevents me to have. I have, for some reason I thought I'd be able to rank 4, but I believe Fortress's effect is if you summon an Ancient Gear from Grave, um, or, uh, from Grave or Hand off of its destruction effect, you can only summon Ancient Gears for the rest of the turn. And so, my limiter removal there just absolutely, like, cock-blocked me. Like, I could've absolutely, like, set my limiter removal and set other cards, and then the next turn, like, he's not gonna pop my Wyvern. He's not. And then I would be able to just damage step, like, limiter removal and deal with the Anomala Karras, and that would've been amazing. But instead, I just make the mistake of just doing the limiter removal right away because I forgot my own card's restriction. <laughs> Whoops! Uh, but then next turn, he's just able to go straight into a uh, totally awesome, I believe he top decked like a frog or something, like a swap frog to use. And I was like, yep, that sounds pretty amazing, right? But so, I finally get to a gear town that I can resolve and try to stick. But so, he uses Toad to negate my gear town um, and then set it so it doesn't trigger. It also wouldn't trigger because it misses timing and all that sort of stuff. So from here, I've just got a catapult that I can't activate. <laughs> And I've got a power bond I can't activate, and then a lone ancient gear box in my hand that's not big enough to like survive any amount of turns or anything like that. So ultimately, I've just been sort of out grinded and outpaced in this game. And honestly, the deck itself that I'm playing, the pure ancient gear deck, performed a lot better than I thought it was going to perform. Uh, in terms of like the pure essence of theory, the pure build, um, I didn't think it was going to perform nearly as well as it actually ended up doing. Uh, in terms of how it operated in these games, in terms of being like. You know, being able to put out Reactor Dragon on a on a decent basis. There's definitely some things that need to be changed about the list, but I think that hybriding this deck with other decks is probably a better way to go because of the fact that, like I've already said, Catapult doesn't really give you a lot of like good starting potential with Gear Town because like you just don't have access to a lot of good starter cards, and your good starter cards like Wyvern and Catapult directly conflict with one another, and Add on to that the ruling on how field spells interact with each other, you can't do the same old thing that we used to do back in 2011, 2012, which was set gear towns over themselves and trigger them. It's no longer considered destroying a field spell if you set a field spell over the gear town. So like, that doesn't even work as a starter uh, play anymore. That was definitely something that I thought was like amazing, but ends up it just doesn't work anymore. It just doesn't work anymore. It hasn't worked since like 2014 when the rule set for the field spells changed, where uh, where both players can have their own field spell, um, and the one field spell zone is not uh, only occupiable by one field spell like it used to be, uh, where you'd have field spell wars of you activate a field spell over your opponent's field spell and it would destroy it for the plus one. That doesn't exist anymore. Um, so the, in the same aspect, the uh, gear town doesn't get destroyed, or doesn't count as being destroyed if you set a field spell over gear town, or if you activate a field spell over it. So like that was just a huge thing that just kind of really hinders this deck's potential, like potential playability in a pure form, but hybrids, like I said, with Zodiac cards, sounds like it could be actually really good, because you're pressuring with Reactor Dragon, then you're pressuring with Dridents, and constant rank 4s and stuff like that, and Barrage can pop Gear Town, which sounds like an insane interaction, it makes it to where you're playing 6 copies of Catapult, essentially, rather than just 3, so... All things to consider, all things to digest. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Any questions, comments, or concerns, all that nonsense. Definitely be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to back the channel and support me directly, then Patreon is the way to go. It's the best way to support me, as well as it gets you into a monthly raffle giveaway for either a high dollar card or some sealed Konami product of a significant amount. Whatever the flavor of the month is, essentially. As well as possible access to my personal Discord server to chat with me and play games with me for videos, which is where Dmall came from in this video. That's a reward tier. If you want to look into it, you can definitely check out what, uh, what that's about. There's definitely a lot of people already in my Discord server. There's 10 people in there already, and all we do is shoot the shit on a daily basis. And then whenever I want to play for videos, I say, hey, who's, who's available in the next X amount of hours? And then we play games and test and do all that sort of nonsense and just talk theory and stuff. But other than that, if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They're a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've experienced thus far. Their pricing and shipping are both very good from what I've had experience with. But if you're looking to acquire cards that I played in this video, then definitely be sure to check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.